Hey folks, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. We've got about a 500 mile little, <laughs> compared to the other day, mini road trip to get us all the way, uh, or the rest of the way, up to Utah Air Guns and maybe even uh, out for a little range time. So we're gonna soak in some uh, beautiful scenery out here. I don't know if you can see this over my shoulder, but just driving through uh, really kind of the north end of the Rocky Mountain Range. Right now we're headed up to Laramie and uh, I'm pretty sure at some point we're gonna take a left and continue on over to Utah. So hopefully you find, uh, find today's video entertaining or at least informative. And uh, I think John's got a couple of competition questions for me picking my brain as we get closer to the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. Hope you enjoy the video. So why don't you tell tell me and the viewers at home a little bit about the equipment you're going to be using at RMAC here in the next few days. I've got three rifles with in the back. Uh, I have my Impact M3 set up in 30 cal. And I'm going to use that for the 100 yard bench rest. It's got a 700 millimeter barrel and at a thousand feet of elevation it was shooting at right around uh, 870 feet per second maybe just a hair under so we'll have to check and see what that's doing at elevation i've got my mark ii impact uh, that's also set up in 30 cal and I'm going to use that for um, the precision rifle course and the uh, speed challenge. And the reason that I'm going to use that one for those competitions is I have one of the Sabre Tactical pump actions on it. So it's the fastest gun I own. Um, which looks really cool, by the way. It looks really cool, uh -huh. and it functions really well. Um, it, you know, you start shooting faster, and it's a little bit harder to be precise. So um, one of the things that I know I'll be doing for that is dialing the scope way back to six power. Um, the challenge with the either the precision rifle course or the speed challenge is there is a timed component to both of those. For the precision rifle course, you don't have unlimited time to shoot your series of targets. Right. So it's nice when you can dial right in, especially because some of those targets are going to be pretty small. Um, the problem with that is you start you start cranking up the magnification, then your parallax error between a 30 yard shot and a 60 or 70 yard shot, you know, you, you have to adjust parallax. And I normally dial, but I'm going to have to be ready to do some holdover work because you don't have time to change the turret, find the target, change the turret, adjust the parallax, and then shoot. Like, the guy you're shooting against in the speed challenge has already finished the speed challenge. Right. Um, so to avoid a situation where I really need to adjust parallax, I'll crank my my scope all the way down to six power which is as low as it can go and 
to be honest, this is one of those competitions where, you know, having a 4 to 16 or, or something in that range actually could be uh, a benefit, but that's not what I have on that gun, so that's not that's not what I'm set up to work, shoot with, so i got to work with what i got. Um, so I'm going to use that rifle for both of those, and then if I have some sort of catastrophic rifle problem, um, then I've got a, a backup gun for the, the big competition. I look at, I think kind of like you, I look at the, the precision rifle and the speed. That's just fun shooting. I mean, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to love it. And I know, especially with the speed, um, the speed challenge makes for good video because it's head to head competition. It's just fun to watch. You know, it's, it's, I won't say it's easy, but for a guy like, uh, you know, Steve Shally to, to be able to put together a video that's exciting to watch, the speed competition just like it, it, it like almost writes itself in terms because it's head to head and stuff's going right, and right. people are calling hits and things are happening. There's there, it, it draw it's funny because it actually draws a crowd because it's cool to watch. It's cool to watch somebody go against somebody else. Yeah. So I just think it's fun to shoot. I don't go into it having huge expectations for myself. Um, it is a lot like a lot of the kind of shooting I've done for you know my career work. You know, shooting at a lot of multiple targets at different places. I would say I'm just more used to them being spread out as opposed to kind of all of them in that direction. But it's right, it's right. a fun way to shoot and I really I look forward to it. Then I'm also gonna take a stab this time at the slug challenge. Um, I'm not a big slug shooter, so like this is really um, really something new for me and I'm gonna do it for the experience, and we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, I took took my Maverick, which certainly has the lungs for shooting slugs. Um, I I purchased uh, a 700 millimeter barrel just to give myself a little more runway, and I'm gonna shoot some 28 and a half grain Nielsen slugs. That it's doing pretty close to MOA groups out to. I've shot it as far as 90 yards, and I need to. One of my main things to do when I get to the range is stretch that out because I, I don't have dope for that. I haven't done it. I may need to may need to tweak that internal hammer spring adjuster just a little bit to get a few more feet per second out of it. But we'll see when we get out there. Um, it's gonna, you know, I'm going to be shooting in a totally different environment. Um, I know the gun is capable of shooting slugs, um, and I know I've had good success so far. We'll see how it goes. All right, so all FX guns. Uh, what are you running for optics on your different guns this time around? Uh, the M3 has um, has a Titan on it, and then the other two guns have the the Helix. All a couple of years ago, I made a decision to go with all um, MRAD or mil scopes. So, and I favor the clean reticle over the dirty reticle. Just less, less optical clutter, in my opinion. And I normally dial uh, for elevation and then just hold left or right for wind. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that turns out. Right, right. The, I, I really like the style of shooting where I dial. I think in these kinds of competitions, people who are really comfortable with holdover, like if I was going to give somebody a practice tip, look at the scenery, man. This is just beautiful. Wow. Uh, You're not kidding. But the, the advice I guess I would give is um, practice holdover because it's faster. For sure. So it, it gives somebody who does a lot of holdover shooting. I think probably has an advantage in the in the speed stuff. Yeah. Now you said you were using the Nielsen slugs. What are you going to be using for pellets? Um, JSB 44 grain, um, 30 cal. It's pretty much what I shoot for long range pellets. Unless I'm shooting the Hades, but you know, there's no. The Hades has a lower BC than the the regular. I always get it confused if it's the exact or the jumbo or the exact jumbo or jumbo exact. 
<laughs> whichever, whichever it is. Um, yeah, the domed pellet has a better PC than the Hades too. So, of course, save my Hades for squirrels and pigeons and stuff like that. Well, and if we're lucky, maybe we'll have some opportunity for some prairie dogs while we're out here. We'll see it's what happens. entirely possible that something like that could happen. I guess we'll see. in the car we finally made it um, I love a road trip and uh, about the only thing better is when you get to someplace 
and get to hook up with friends you haven't seen in a while. So next video will be range day uh, and registration. So we hope you'll tune back in and until then, shoot safe and shoot straight.